and then just perfect. Okay. Mm -hmm. so welcome back, everybody. Um, welcome to part two. Uh, and right now we have our own John Joseph Mastandrea telling him us about Thailand, where he's just returned from, and uh, apparently, going by his Facebook posts, he's had an amazing time. So, John Joseph. Hello, everybody. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's been it was a remarkable adventure, and I will try to do my best to to just share the highlights because if we shared every detail, we'd be here from now till next year. And so, but Thailand, uh, let me just pull up the wonderful PowerPoint and make sure you can see that. Good. And go from there. And one second, let me just, one second. And, okay. Bear with me, I'm just trying to move. I'm just trying to move into one second, let me just mute for the second. I'm gonna close the door one second, okay. What I'm going to do, I'm going to stop sharing, go back to the beginning one second, because like what I'm finding is the, there it is. Okay, slide is from the beginning. Good. Good. Oh, I see. I can't do that. Okay, we're going to do this. Now you can see that. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Perfect. Okay. I'm just going to, oh, I know I figured out what I can do. There. Okay, good. I just learned something. The entire menu bar, PowerPoint, I didn't know you could move it. Go figure. We learn, we learn as we go. So Thailand, you might say, why did I go to Thailand? Well, a friend of mine, Gary McLaughlin, has been going for a couple of years now. So it was a tremendous opportunity to go with him. And Bill was going to go, but unfortunately, because his nephew, his health wasn't so good and his father wasn't so good, either. we're going to save that for another year. So here we go. This is uh, the poster, but I'll explain to you later what this is. I'm just going to go into moving the talk. The talk. There we are. So this is us at the airport. Uh, I think it was when we first uh, were, 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 were arrived in Thailand. And we were just, think of this as we flew to... To Amsterdam and we had a 15 hour layover and then we had another 11 hours in a plane so uh, you can well imagine uh, between fatigue and limitations so we had we had our heavy jackets on because we were still coming into it was very cold in the air conditioning but yeah so we arrived and we we're full of a lot of energy and this is a call this after we arrived we had to stay for the for at least one day in a quarantine hotel. We had to do a COVID test and then that was negative. And then we were able to move into another hotel. So this is, uh, think of it as uh, technically uh, a, it would, would have been January the 6th. And what happened in Thailand was absolutely remarkable. You walk on the street and right away someone says, oh, hi, how are you? And next thing you know, we're boarding a tuk-tuk, which is a three wheel, I think a motorcycle with a big, uh, trailer in the back in, in, uh, for two people can board. And then the tuk tuk took us to a person who could lead us on in that boat on the top left. And we went on a canal, circle, circumnavigated the canals and saw that, that, that our driver was right out front. And it was absolutely magical. We were seeing Thailand or Bangkok from call it canal level. And so I, I showed some photos here. You see bottom left, you see the view on the water. Again, it just sparkled and, and there, believe it or not, there was lots of fish. I think in some cases there was even alligators. So we, of course, we didn't see any of those. But I wanted to show you in the top right, one of the, again, immediately you knew you were another place because you saw the Buddha. And yes, that Buddha is probably about 50 or 60 feet tall. But you get a sense of the people friendly and kind. And they greet each other with Sawedika, the praying hand that says Sawedika, meaning goodbye. And so that's a part portion of day one. And then one of the temples that we saw the first day, again, 
when you look at that temple, doesn't it remind you somehow of an Aztec temple? And you see the, uh, again, the remarkable journey of that place in that time. And so that, that particular temple was one of the older temples right on, right up beside the river full. And if you go for, further along, and we see, again, inside the temple, again, reminding you and what people did, they often, they, they made merit where they would sometimes donate a, a 20 baht or 50 baht, which is about uh, two or $3 and light incense and or sometimes give gifts of food or a, a robe of, of, a, of a monk. And it gives you a sense and you can always walk in, you took your shoes off and uh, honored and repaid respect. And you can see many different versions of the Buddha and Buddhism, as you may know, came to what began in 600 BCE in India and then spread uh, very, not very shortly in Southeast Asia and certainly China and certainly portions of, um, of Asia. But it, for some reason, it didn't, didn't take on west, the west of India as much. And I, I still trying to do some research to figure out why. And you'll notice sometimes renderings of the Buddha are slender, sometimes more, more robust, sometimes female, sometimes uh, looking at animal. Right? Again, this is the, on that same day, the standing Buddha. Again, you'll see markets around and you'll see there was a stairway to go up to the top of this particular location. Again, it was quite remarkable. And that was part of that. So what did happen, the, the boat took us ashore and then we took another tuk-tuk around to see another few spots and we saw. And then we saw, uh, what happened? Sorry, jump too farther. Okay. And then we saw again that particular day, this is the, uh, the royal palace where they had the Emerald Buddha. And then you see uh, the, the king doesn't actually live there very much. There's a summer palace as well. Uh, quite often is abroad in many different locations, but that's for special. Okay, we can go inside there. And what you'll see quite a lot of is elephants. Elephants are very sacred in, in Thailand. And uh, later we'll be telling you about how we went to an elephant sanctuary, a place where they, they discourage people riding them, but just uh, honoring them, definitely. And uh, again, very powerful. You notice that the uh, particular images of the temple. And if you slide along, and then that, so that's showing you again, um, later, uh, it was the next day actually, we went to, and I help you if I get the name correct, it was a market just outside the downtown by about 20 minutes. We took an elevated rail and their transit system is, am is amazing. Two levels of above ground railroad, two levels of below ground uh, uh, transit. And so we, we took the elevated rail initially to the Jim Thompson house and later we took it to the, to the day to Chattachak market. And again, hundreds and hundreds of vendors selling food and clothing and all sorts of wares. And uh, that particular day I bought one of these fanny packs that made a comeback. So I bought one of those and we had some great lunch that particular day. And then uh, later the same day, we went to Lumfini Park, which used to be a private royal garden. Now it's a public park. And uh, it's in the middle of the city, and not unlike our high park, but and what you're seeing uh, immediately on your right is a monitor lizard. And monitor lizards are about seven or eight feet long. And you don't pet them. Uh, they're not, they, they could bite you, but they were sort of all over the park. But you, you know right away, they're in a different space at a different time. And again, quite remarkable. And then we keep going and, oh, here we go. And so you're, in the middle of the of the um, the picture, you see Win. Oh, sorry, it's jumping. Sorry about that. And there we go. Win. Win was a good friend of of uh, my friend Gary's, and Win was so full of energy. He was like our Gandalf and our Dumbledore, guiding us around and taking us to different places. And it was good to be able to do that because, again, as much as you can use guides. So he was think of as our unofficial official guide, and he took us. Uh, that was for, I think, our test. We had to have a second test five, five days in, but it took us to the uh, Heritage uh, Rail Station, which said initially we we're going to tear down, not unlike our Grand Central or Grand Union Station, but they decided to restore it. And so we went there and around the immediate neighborhood, see elephants, and you see the bottom uh, right corner, an image of the outdoor of that particular uh, historical rail station. And you see on the top right, the image of a tuk-tuk. So again, it's three wheels, you are not, there's no seat belt, and there you are going along. And it, you see immediately in the center the picture of the king, and Thailand is a kingdom with a king and a queen. And, and it's, it's remarkable. The history of Thailand 
So when Mongol, uh, Genghis Khan uh, was doing his thing in, in China, the Sukhothai of Southern China came down into the region and they're the people who were the first people to call themselves Thai, going back to 11, 1200s, give or take. And then there's periods where they've had successful kingdoms and periods where Burma would not, um, uh, Myanmar are now called, would invade. But keep in mind, Thailand was never a, a colony of any European nation. Somehow they managed to keep separate. And the story of Anna and the King of Siam, yes, there's a true story, but obviously a Hollywood film is an adaption. Definitely. And so I'm just going to move to the next one. And bear with me. Sometimes these things. Okay, there we go. And so food, the food in Thailand. Oh, sorry. Yes, there was, you have to be careful. Sometimes it was very hot, so you ate lots of rice, but the food was delightful and remarkable. So that uh, same day, we were taken, there's, you can see the market on your top right, and you can see us feeding the fish, and you can see the temples in the distance. And we went to what's called the turtle temple, and we were feeding the, the turtles bananas. And I've never fed, the turtles are about the size of a double dinner plate, and absolutely remarkable and truly remarkable. And then the, the next day after that, we went to what's called the Golden Mount Temple. So that was 344 steps to the top. We went near the end of day, which is absolutely phenomenal and truly remarkable. And again, you could travel to, you know, see on the meter, right, the stairs. And you see then in the center, the, the view of the sunset and the image of the Buddha and can you know, the surround view of the entire city of Bangkok. It was extremely magical. Now, later that day, we went to yeah. one second. And then you see on the immediate left, as part of the Temple of the Golden Mount, we could write our name on this. It wasn't golden leaf, it was sort of like a brass leaf, but it's a way and you paid again, made merit, you, you, gave, you gave some money, and you wrote your name and people would offer prayers. That's my friend Gary putting one of these leaves on that archway you see right there. Again, it's quite remarkable because it's part of the Temple of the Golden Mount. And you see the next one, as sun is setting, uh, again, getting ready for Chinese New Year. And so uh, one thing I learned is that Chinese New Year is for many people, not many cultures. They, they refer to it as Lunar New Year, so Thai people celebrate it. Vietnamese people, Lao people, you say Lao, not Laos, and certainly uh, people from Korea. And uh, so billions of people around the globe, and that's at night, and again, very, very magical. And looking to, to the next day, again, this is us. us we've uh, by this point we've moved towns and we've uh, gone up to the middle of the of Thailand to Chiang Mai. Now Chiang Mai actually has a population of two million and was a key uh, regional center that was first formed 11, 1200. So what you're seeing is a temple, again built 11, 1200s, and we're in the old town uh, where our wonderful hotel was. And the hotel, uh, the, the, it's again, very modestly priced. And they're surrounded by a moat. Now, the moat itself is probably uh, two or three kilometers, square by two or three kilometers. Square. I should did a run around it one day in the morning. But in this particular hotel, there was these wonderful koi pond. But again, you see Gary, he's putting this fabric. And we, we were, again, both of us placed this offering a prayer and honoring Dream Mary. It was quite amazing. The truly, people are truly, holy, uh, but not in a pervasive sort of way, in a very uh, meditational manner and a, a very gentle and, and humble in many res respects. So if we keep going and we look at, this is our guide. His name is Woody. Now he took us, uh, it was after we arrived the next day in Chiang Mai, and he took us for a drive outside the city to the high mountains. And I said, it's the Wa Washaba Falls, and then of course the Ik Kathonon National Park. And so there we went to what's called the, the Temple of the King and Temple of the Queen that was created a few years ago. But again, you see an integration of, of beauty that's inside and outside. Again, you see this wonderful walkway that's been in, in, included to help people navigate. And you see on the, the left side, a great sense of the stairways that lead up to both the, the, the Queen's Temple was sort of a violet color and the King's Temple was sort of an orangey black. And again, quite beautiful in many respects. And Woody was very helpful at navigating around. And then we go to the next, next one. So the, then we, we came 
back near Bang, near Chiang Mai, we went to the, the cave temple. Again, here is something that goes back many uh, centuries, again, below ground. And you see the, the wonderful mystery and invitation right on the same grounds. You see, you can have an opportunity to feed the pigeons and feed the, 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 the fish. Again, a great gift and to be part of and join in. Just slide over and, and then we have the next part. And I'm just going to shoot this the next day. Another, so we had another person uh, drive us around. Uh, and again, we're, this is Chiang Mai, and we're seeing the Silver Temple. And again, this particular temple, again, is, is attributed to another group of people. And I showed you in the top center, you'll see the night market, where you could, there was about 20 different vendors, all sorts of different food. And the food was probably, if it, now a bot is worth, 100 baht is worth $3.78 Canadian. So two people could eat for about four or five dollars. It was absolutely remarkable. And that gives you uh, top right is an image of the wall that goes back to 11, 1200. And again, quite remarkable. And then you go into uh, the next day, uh, or sorry, later the same day. This is called the Suket Temple, which again is on the, to the west of down the old city. And you get a sense of this remarkable climbing up several hundred stairs to the top and you see Buddhist monks coming down. And then you see uh, the same day we went to this other what particular white temple and the, the driver and the tuk-tuk, he took us to a silk market called the Thai silk market. And we saw, heard about, we saw live silkworms and, and someone forming and weaving silk. And the bottom, bottom section, you can see uh, the view from the top of the temple. And then immediately right, you see, Gary received a blessing from the, the Buddhist monk, and I also received a blessing, and it was quite a gift and honor to do that, because he actually put a tie to, uh, he was making these wonderful uh, uh, string bracelets. And then we go to the, the next day, uh, where we ventured out to an uh, elephant sanctuary, where that's a place for the elephants who have either been a part, uh, held well, from circuses, and or places where they've been ridden, or sometimes they've been injured, and here they have a coherence of healing and restoring and begin receiving better nutrition. So there you have several elephants and we stayed there for several hours and got to walk around. Now, uh, because of COVID, they didn't really want you to touch the elephants, but we could see them from afar. And again, we got, we got to walk around and they also had dogs and also cats in the, in the elephant sanctuary. And uh, keep going along and... And that's Chiang Rai. Now, Chiang Rai is the northernmost tip of Thailand and at the, at the border of Myanmar and Laos. And so what you have there is one of the outdoor markets on your top left. And then you have a view of uh, the, one of the rivers in Chiang Rai. And then you have a view on the top right of one of the Buddhist statues. And then you have bottom left was the actual the bus that we took from Chiang Mai to Chiang Rai. And it's interesting how buses have changed very much. They had other video screens and, uh, and actually a bathroom on board. And that's an image of our hotel in Chiang Rai. And in the bottom center is a clock tower, which I'll show you a picture of later, which at night at seven, eight, and nine plays music, both classical and contemporary. And the bo top uh, bottom la right is an image. There was fruit and this is the fruit pomelo. I had so much of it. It was actually quite remarkable. And this is sliding along. And so there's later the same day it was raining. So we had our wonderful umbrellas. And that's a looking at night. You remember I told you about the clock tower. So center top, you see the image. The clock tower changed colors. And with each color change, it moved to the rhythm of the music. It was quite remarkable. So the next day, we did a tour about with a person by the name of, of, of Peter. And Peter was very helpful. We went to the Blue Temple, and you look over on your left, and you see a bit of the uh, interior of the Blue Temple, the sort of, again, just adjacent to the left. And then we went to this, uh, again, other house, uh, middle, where there was all these interesting art pieces and lots of uh, different um, alligator skins and, and other uh, animals, again. And what they've done in, in Chiang Rai, is these art installations of the Blue Temple, the, the, the house, the, the Black House, and the White Temple are a way to, to help people celebrate art and culture. And they very much do this in Chiang Rai. And again, you see me on the, 
on the bottom beside this, think of it as a, a sort of statue. Uh, and then over on the left, you see Gary and I, and then over on the right is a Hindu temple in the midst of this Buddhist temple as well. Again, visually it's stunning and the people are remarkable, the history and celebrating uh, people and culture. This, on the same day, we went to uh, a tea plantation. And so you see this grounds, we actually had some tea and we had some green, uh, green tea ice cream. And uh, same day, we went to the monkey temple and there was a, a very tall staircase that went up the side of the cliff. And then on the right, you can see the, the monkeys. There was 100, 900. They told you not to pet them, but we honor them and uh, just get, uh, keep them from afar. And then there was this amazing cave where there's, there was this Buddhist temple inside the cave. Again, absolutely remarkable. And then you keep sliding along. And okay, so this is the same day. This is with our guide, Peter. And what you'll notice, there's us three. And then in the center, you see a scorpion. There was a scorpion temple at this location. And the immediate right, this is called the Golden Triangle. And the Golden Triangle, immediately to your north is Myanmar. Immediately to your right is Laos. And, and, and closer to you is Thailand. So you think of this part of the world that seems so far away, but so it was, it was amazing that it was a bright blue sky that you could see the blue water and uh, realize that this has been the history of uh, many civilizations over time and space. And, uh, quite beautiful. You can slide around. And this is another uh, temple. And this is actually back in Chiang Rai proper. And you'll notice there was a, there was a getting ready for Chinese New Year. There was lots of uh, wonderful lanterns everywhere. And again, the food, oh, again, uh, remarkable. Every, every uh, meal was very, very light fare, but very, very interesting nonetheless. And uh, again, people were, like, unlike here, where you couldn't sell food in certain places, they could just open their, their wares on a sidewalk and start barbecuing and have um, set up tables and offer food to people whether it be bananas. I remember, I forgot to mention, in Chiang Mai, there was one night where there was a Muslim couple, they were, they were sauteing up fresh roti on their, their, their frying pan, and they put a sliced banana, and they put butter, and they put raisins, and they fried it up, and it was truly remarkable. And also, mango or sticky rice uh, dessert. That was a, quite a remarkable. And now, here we go. This is back to Bangkok. And so here we have, and four Buddhists facing it. We went to a place called the Ancient City. So think of Bangkok's version of Black Creek Pioneer Village. But unlike Black Creek Pioneer Village, all these are life-size replicas of temples all around Thailand. So you see on your bottom left, this was absolutely remarkable integrate, interlay. And then on your right, Again, showing you the that your eye is looking up, meeting the sacred, and then immediately on your right again, you see two different uh, vistas of the same temple. So you would walk in, and you would explore. And the difference is, these were not just artifacts; they were places where people came to offer prayer during during uh, times. And this is the we we went on a day trip to a place called Ayutthaya. Ayutthaya was the one of the capitals for about 500 years from about 1300 to 1700 in Thailand. Now, unfortunately, the, 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 the Burmese invaded and took it over, but right in the same location of Ayutthaya, we took a train to get there, and there's also the summer palace of the king. And immediately on the bottom left, you see that image. And then uh, as we had a look around in the particular place, we saw this Buddha statue that was had been enveloped by a tree. And you see me, wearing elephant pants. Now I had to put, apparently, I forgot that when you go visit the Bami Palace, the Bangpa Palace, you have, you can't wear shorts, you have to wear. So I had to buy these for 100 baht, which is $3.78, these elephant pants, which are quite quite fun and adventurous. But And so here's again, Ayutthaya, the, air, the city, again showing, keep in mind, it was a vast ancient kingdom, probably as big as Angkor Wat, but not as detailed. But again, you look at the architecture, it speaks to another place, another time, 11, 12, 1300s, and, and uh, certainly 
absolutely uh, mystical and magical. You know, something as I as I was observing this, if you look at um, uh, right side, I couldn't help but think of how it's similar but different to the Aztec and Mayan temples in Mexico. So who who knows? Maybe there was a cross pollination of architecture. Can you slide over to the next part? The next day, we went on a, a, a train ride to the River Kwai. You remember the bridge over the River Kwai? Well, this was it. And it was rather comedic that day because we had six different stops. <coughs> the first stop we got off and got, saw a, a wonderful temple. And when we came back to the train, there was no train. And of course, we had this mini panic. We're in the middle of Thailand. We're not sure what. And then we asked a, 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 a person at the station. And they said, oh, yes, it's coming back. And I thought, where does one put a train? But needless to say, they did. And there we are in the River Kwai. And keep in mind, uh, I'll show you to see the food ahead of you. And you'll notice on the immediate left, there's a, a cemetery. And there were several thousand prisoners. Because remember, this was a bridge that was built uh, forced labor by the Japanese during World War II to go into uh, what was Burma at the time. And many died as prisoners of war, showing you the river. And there was also a waterfall there too as well. Okay. And so the next night, we went to something called Icon Siam. Icon Siam is this amazing massive shopping concourse. But again, in preparation, we were going on a boat cruise that particular night on the river and showing the lit, light up uh, images of the, uh, the dragon, very key symbol for, um, for Chinese New Year. And the, as you know, it's the year of the tiger. I'm actually a rabbit myself. But again, uh, celebrating many different parts of... Uh, so you think of Italy, but the size of the Eaton Center, but honoring Asian culture with floating markets and everything else. And then if you look at then, the next night we went to a place called Asia Teak, which used to be something comparable to Queen's Key, used to be much more wharf and shipping and warehouses. Now it's uh, very much about restaurants and Ferris wheels and lovely places to eat and merry-go-rounds. And, oh, and Mealy on the right is called the Ghost Con. Apparently there's a legend around it. It was built there. You can see it's very ornate. It didn't have proper zoning, so they stopped the building. And since then, there's been, unfortunately, many people who have, who have died there. And so it's, uh, I'm not sure why they're not tearing it down, but it's got a whole legend around it. They call it the ghost condominium. And, uh, and this is the return back. So the return back went from Bangkok to um, Amsterdam. And you look at the, 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 the land route we're going over. I mean, this takes you through Central Asia. You think of all the ancient places, it's truly remarkable. And look at that. Okay, I think that's it. And okay. Now that's a whirlwind. Okay. And do people have any questions or comments? I'm envious. Like... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, it was 35, 35 Celsius. Wow, that's hot. So what, what we made sure, I always kept my head covered with a baseball hat and I always wore a sports sunscreen, which was waterproof. So I, someone said, you didn't have a tan. I said, well, no, my, my goal was not, believe me, I would have burned to bits and whatnot, yes. But when you, when you think of, of, of certainly that part of the world, and I, I know other than Thai restaurants, you realize these, this, these Thai people are truly remarkable. And it reminded me of some of the things we could do here when you saw how people could sell food on the sidewalk. They would do this early morning to midday and they make a living. But I think what, what prevents us from doing that here is the Board of Health and zoning and but people set up tables and mm -hmm. for 40 baht, you would have a bowl of chicken Asian Thai soup. And this is a very massive, I actually, I got into having a Thai chicken soup in the morning for breakfast, because one, I thought, I'm in Thailand. I don't want to eat egg, bacon and eggs. I want to try something <laughs> different. And it was absolutely remarkable. And, and they had this one little dessert they had. It was, think of, think of fried uh, crepes the size of a Pringle, and they put meringue on it. And oh, they were so delicious and so delicious. And, and again, a people that you get a sense, it's, there's old and young, but a city that's very much on the go with lots of possibilities for many people. And, you know, we tended to be, we were very fortunate. 
we got to experience Thailand from the inside out because we got to meet people on the ground and hear the Thai story, not from sort of third or fourth hand, but from on hand. And I remember one night we went to Chinatown in Bangkok. Well, we think we have Chinatown. Well, their Chinatown is, is huge and so full of bustle and hustle and, and just people selling different things. And, and it's, uh, I mean, just the culture and the places and the people and truly, truly remarkable. Again, it's a, it's a part of the world I never would have gone unless my friend Gary had suggested. But again, it reminds us how uh, in today we're learning so much about each other and how we can learn even more. And, you know, you think of right in that part of the world, you have Thailand, the next door is Cambodia. Mm -hmm. And then just up, up, up north of that is Laos. We used to call it Laos. And then Myanmar. And then Vietnam. And then south, uh, uh, there's Malaysia. And of course, part of Malaysia is Singapore. And then to the east, there's Indonesia. And then mm -hmm. further east, there is uh, Philippines. And, mm -hmm. and there's, uh, then of course, south of that is Australia. But then to the north, you have um, Japan and Korea. And it's, when you think of there's probably four and a half billion people living in that corner of the world. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's staggering. Thailand itself has 100 million people. Wow. Yes. Now, has anyone ever uh, known any Thai people themselves, other than people who own restaurants, or maybe they don't own people who own restaurants? Did you ever, did you, did, so I, I had a neighbor once, he was, well, on Sword Street, he was serving, he had, he had a Thai restaurant on Gerard. It was quite good. He, his, 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 his focus was having, having Thai food made by Thai people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and quite remarkable. And there's a real, real sense we, we bought elephants from the, uh, the wooden elephants to support the elephant sanctuary. I bought some coffee there too. But to, to hear the good they're doing of helping elephants in sanctuaries mm -hmm. and trying to get it, and, and very present and aware of, of e ecology. We went to one exhibit and several others that are trying to integrate back into having trees. And in parks within the city and urban landscapes, which I think is very much what we're trying to do and be aware of, mm -hmm. and it's very important and very powerful. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. So, any any other thoughts or? Thank you. Very but... envious of you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just I was just sort of to see all those temples, and if you look very closely, how intricate they are, and obviously they really revere. Um, the religion and things associated with it and that's probably why the people are the way they are it's their their belief system and it carries mm -hmm. through their everyday life and um yeah it's very beautiful i, I just mm -hmm. love i would i'm envious about the elephant sanctuaries because i'm very yeah. i like elephants myself well, so you, you, from, you raise yeah. a very relevant point you see th their religion isn't put upon them it's it's very much part of the everyday life and so you would see buddha shrines outside hotels outside restaurants in people's homes mm -hmm. and so it, it, some, it's interesting how it's sort of it's it's always around and so other than other than and i think in many ways we do talk about that in christianity but and and we do and, and engage mm -hmm. embrace that but i think it's something that because thailand has never been taken over by mm -hmm. another country Unlike some other uh, Asian countries, I think that really made a difference, and uh, mm -hmm. to help them retain their own a sense of who yeah. they are and their own identity, and which I think is, is, is because you think if we to use the term indigenous, well, the Thais are indigenous to Thailand. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's really, truly really remarkable. But a real sense of harmony. Oh, we, I, I did. I did forget to mention we did go to the one of the days near Ch outside Chiang Rai, the Along Neck Village. Now I didn't take any photos because I, out of respect for the long neck people. And what the long neck people are, they, they oh. developed this culture of putting rings mm. on, I think, I'm not sure if it's women or men and women, but and they women. extend their necks and it's, I think yeah. it, it actually causes, uh, I think it's called physiological harm. I'm not sure if I could be wrong. Uh -huh. But so we did go to the village. So I would call it, they would be more likely the uh, people who have kept a heritage, mm. uh, the older heritage. Because I think long neck people are also in in Africa, different countries of Africa, mm. 
and also in different parts of the world. But can, they're trying to get away from that. But again, honoring the people and honoring the land, because what they're trying to do is make, make a sustainable culture of agriculture and farming and what they're doing in that, that respect. Yeah. But the elephants, again, absolutely stunning and, 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 and being connected to turtles and the fish mm-hmm. and, and the birds and, and, and the, the list goes on and the, the, the remarkable landscape and, and the cityscape too. I mean, you have the, again, the old and the new and the, the integration of the river and even the canals where you have people. There's one time when we were on the, the longboat and we were driving along and there's one moment she was just selling you know, soda pop and beer if you want to buy a beer. <laughs> And I thought, this is, this is absolutely phenomenal. I mean, they're just sort of stopping by the side of the road. But they, they, their, their idea of, of economy is very different than ours. Right? I mean, certainly people have businesses with, with fixed addresses, but certainly you can sort of pick up and sell anything anywhere you want and pretty well. I have a very different idea from that perspective. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. The, um, it's, it's interesting because, you know, the West, coming from Europe, we, we tend to fight nature. Mm-hmm. And uh, other countries live with it. You know, it, is it going to be cold? Okay, we'll let it be cold. Is it going to rain? We'll let it rain. None mm-hmm. of this um, trying to control it. Mm-hmm. We'll climb the hill. We won't mow it down sort of thing. So that's interesting. Well, I love know. the color in the country. So much. Oh, color. It's very colorful. It just makes you feel al- well, physically. I like it. it makes you feel alive. You don't feel, couldn't feel depressed, put it that way. <laughs> No, it's, it's very colorful. And even yeah. though they said it was the dry season, it was still quite green. And I mean, you talked about an integration of nature. It's interesting because mm-hmm. someone said when Indonesia had the tsunami a couple of years back, well, people, there's certainly people who knew what to do, right? And just mm-hmm. like like you, um, Ian, you talked about the Philippines. Well, you know, in the monsoon season, you don't travel, right? Mm-hmm. So you're not, you're not trying to fight the yeah. monsoon season because you're not, you're not going to win. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Don't fight yeah. with Mother Nature. <laughs> exactly. So, whereas we try to do that all the time, and I uh, wonder why we're we're, we're losing, yeah. so to speak. Yes, yeah. but uh, again, uh, I, 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 these these are just the highlights. I could have showed oh. many, many, many more images and many more possibilities, and that's certainly oh. uh, every, every day was a was a new adventure. And so, but I guess there was always a sense of, of willingness of seeing and touching and tasting, mm. and and the uh, and, and and you, you would go to a place. And there'd be bowls of this and pots of that. And you say, oh, yeah. and I usually would say to Wynn or whoever was with us, well, what do you think would be good? Well, why don't you try that? We'll try that. <laughs> and then, uh, and it was, uh, you know, every now and then it, we, we had something that was a wee bit warm, so to speak. Yeah. And, uh, but you'd make sure you'd have more rice to balance the heat. Okay. And then it would probably the, kill all your germs too, having the hot I, stuff. You, you know, I, I would say with Thai food, I felt this tremendous sense of energy. Unlike other foods, it sometimes makes you sort of feel tired and weak, sleepy. So you're really aware of that. And one of the things I was also very aware of in some of the temples where you heard the Buddhist chanting mm. and you could feel the chant enter you. Mm. And it was almost like it, it realigned your, your chakras or your, your, your being. And I did leave out one pity. It was a lying Buddha in lying down, this massive, probably 100 foot long Buddha. And we went to one particular day near the Royal Palace, a Thai school of massage where you, they put these sort of silk robe on you and all they did was our legs, but it was so relaxing. Oh my gosh. And uh, you felt a real sense of uh, soothing and, and healing. Yeah. There are certainly people that are healers, I would say. Definitely. Yes. Yeah. 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 So any, any other thoughts or comments? That was amazing. Well, thank you. Are you thank thinking you. of going back there? Is there places that you missed yeah. or could have, um, yeah. that you would go back to see? Vietnam and Cambodia. Yeah. <laughs> I want to see Angkor Wat. Wow. Apparently Angkor Wat would be as big as the, well, I'm not sure, very, quite large. And it, they still don't know why it, what happened to the people there. But it was mm-hmm. yeah, and the Khmer Kingdom. Yeah, Khmer Empire. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's even more interesting, but yeah. But we learned from the people before us, right? Mm-hmm. Definitely. The fact that they were not overtaken really surprises me. Not that yeah. every country should be invaded, but. No, and they also, apparently there's a law now, you cannot have, foreign people cannot own land. Ah. So that's how they retain, which is quite ah. bright. 
because uh, because as you know, what happens is you bit by bit. I'm sure people bend rules and try to get around that too. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, thank you everybody for listening and uh, being patient. And back over to you, Susan. Okay. Well, thank you, everyone, for coming. Um, hope you enjoyed this. Uh, next week we will be having Joseph Curry, who will be talking about bees and their part in the you know infrastructure of life and how even the city dwellers what we do can impact them like we'll see mm. things like uh, what plants we keep what plants we try to get rid of so i'm looking forward to seeing that and i hope you can join us thank you everybody have a great day take care well, thank you for taking us on a vacation i enjoyed it <laughs> yes especially this weather travels with jd bye-bye yeah, bye-bye thank you bye.